Hello, this video is a tutorial about how to use the uh, tools inside of the Retro Arcade Creator on Sploder.com. If you haven't watched the first video on, uh, on the Retro Arcade Creator, I encourage you to look at that to show you how to use the menus to get to this point. Um, but for now, let's get started on how to use um, the tools inside of the Creator. Um, first of all, you'll see um, I've already started drawing some land, and when you start out, uh, when you create a new stage inside of a level, um, you, can, you start out by uh, using um, ground and the paint tool is selected. So I can just drag across the screen and draw land very quickly. It's a little different from the uh, original platformer creator on Sploder where you actually had to draw, uh, drag and drop block by block to draw things. Um, this you can actually use paint tools to paint uh, uh, long bits of land. Um, so it's a lot faster in that respect. Um, Let's walk through uh, the basic interface here. On the left, we've got um, all of the tools that allow us to create things um, on the play field. And then on the uh, right at the top here, we've got uh, different uh, trays. And these are object trays or uh, item trays. Uh, you can use whatever word you want. But they're basically the objects and uh, tiles and things we would be able to put into our play field. Um, and then uh, over here, the bottom uh, right, is uh, our settings, which allow us to change certain things about the game. For instance, here is, uh, we can actually change our background color. Uh, and then we can change the music for the game. I'm going to turn off the music in this case so that I'm not drowned out. Uh, and then over here is uh, this diamond right here. allows us to change um, the attributes of the player for when we test. And uh, it's only for testing, doesn't affect the actual game itself. But for instance, if I was in a deeper level in the game and I wanted to give the guy more power-ups so I can um, fight against uh, more powerful enemies, um, then I would change them in here. Um, and this green button allows me to test my level, so I uh, test my stage. If I just click on that, I can test right away. And use my uh, controls there to move the player. And if I want to go back, I just hit the pause button. And over here, uh, let's go in, in detail on these tools. Um, the finger tool, uh, uh, actually first here is the uh, undo button. And uh, so for instance, if I was painting and I made a mistake, I could just undo it right away. Um, after that is the uh, finger uh, or select tool, and that allows me to drag, drag the stage around. But it also allows me to tap on the screen and change individual parts of the uh, play field. I'm doing that. And uh, that also allows me to place objects. So if I had selected an uh, object, I can just tap to place those. Uh, after the uh, select in our finger tool, uh, we have the eyedropper tool. The eyedropper tool allows me to select something on this that's already on the play field and, and basically put it into my palette so that I can uh, add more of them or modify something. So if I were to select uh, the ground, it would automatically choose the ground over here and then uh, select the paint tool so I can immediately start painting. If I go back and I click on the eyedropper again and I pick the coin, I now have the coin armed and I can add more. It's just a way to uh, be able to uh, add things quickly instead of always having to fish, fish through these uh, object trays. Now the object trays uh, are a little different from the other creators in that um, you don't um, drag and drop. You don't drag uh, and drop onto the screen. You select and then you can use the paint tools to paint them or place them. The reason for that is that I now have added uh, the ability to drag back and forth on into certain items and, and be able to select different things in there. It allows me to keep the menus more compact um, but also group things together so they're organized um, according to what kind of thing they are. And uh, there are three different trays here. The first one is uh, the tiles for the maps. Um, I can change the ground, I can drag and change the texture of it, and then I can paint. Uh, I can choose uh, different kinds of backgrounds. 
um, oops. I can choose scenery and I won't go through all of these things um, so that you can explore yourself um, but you can see how different things will uh, layer on top of each other in the game. Um, and keep in mind that, that uh, in this in this uh, particular um, tray where all these tiles are, um, things that are in individual um, wells or uh, buckets, wherever you want to say here, um, will not be able to exist in the same place at the same time. So if I were to choose this scenery, I couldn't place it on top uh, of the old scenery. It replaces it. Same thing with, say, uh, this ground here. I can't place another ground on below here. It will replace the other ground. Sort of the same thing with items. If I were to place a health uh, on top of uh, on top of this here energy here, it would just replace it. And then uh, the final tray here. These are uh, I'm sorry. The second one here is uh, all uh, game items, power ups, switches, um, different items and objects in the game uh, that uh, allow you to. Uh, do things like checkpoints, power-ups, um, anything but enemies, basically. Um, and then the last one is all the, the bad guys. Um, and uh, I separated them because the bad guys are a little more complex, um, and uh, they kind of needed to be grouped together because they had different behaviors. Um, and then once you add things in your game, um, you can actually... Um, it actually is much wider than this, so let me show you a little bit about navigating. Um, with the select tool, I can drag around and drag and throw uh, the play field back and forth. With the, uh, it's a little bit from the uh, paint tool, whereas when I have the paint tool selected, I can't actually move the play field, it just draws. Um, so if I want to be able to move, drag, and then I switch back the paint tool and I can make my play field longer. Um, so in order to make that a little simpler, what I've also done is if you're on a computer you can hold down the shift key and switch back and forth between the two tools. So if I have paint tool selected, I can hold down shift and drag and then draw longer. Shift, drag, draw longer. Shift, drag, draw longer. So I can create a very long game this way quickly. Um, the, the eraser tool um, allows me to um, erase uh, and it's a little bit smarter than a, than a standard eraser in that the first thing that I click on will be uh, erased and nothing else. So if I were to pick on an object, an item like a coin, it, will, it won't erase the land, it'll only erase um, objects. If I were to pick on, um, say, some of the scenery here, it's only going to erase the scenery and, and not the other pieces. So I can erase things uh, behind other things and get rid of them quickly. And finally, if I select the land, it will erase the land. And then I can uh, always undo if I make a mistake. The Move tool allows me to move things around. Only uh, items are moved. You can also, uh, if you don't click on an item, you can also move around by dragging. And then the link tool uh, allows me to link things together uh, for complex behavior. I can, for instance, link, link a switch to an object to turn it on. And uh, we have some tutorials on the website to show you how to do that. And then the text tool allows me to uh, add dialogue to the game. I can. Um, just place text anywhere and it doesn't really matter. It doesn't show up in the place that I put it um, physically, but uh, it will show up uh, at that point in the game. So if I put it da further down in the game, when I walk that way, it will show when I get there. Um, I can also link um, text using the link tool to uh, objects. And we'll show you that kind of stuff in, in a future tutorial, but I want to keep this one short. Hopefully uh, this will give you a good overview of how to use the new creator.